they say that figures don't lie, but that liars figure. We've constantly heard the pharisaical conservatives trumpeting how the stock market has gone up. And isn't that wonderful? I suppose it's better than it tanking. But the point is that the stock market going up is a tremendous thing only if you have a million dollars in the stock market. If you have a million dollars in the stock market and the stock market goes up by 1%, you just got $10,000. Well, hooray for you. Very, very, very few people in this country, statistically, find their wealth greatly increased by a 1% increase, a 1% growth in the value of the stock market. In fact, it's nice if the stock market goes up, but it only means $100 a year for that family. It's the same thing as always, a rising tide does not lift all boats. It lifts the people who own yachts and the remainder drown. The same thing is true with average wealth in the United States. Oh, we love to hear average wealth in the United States has gone up. It's a wonderful thing. But what nobody mentions is that if you leave off the top 3%, average wealth has done nothing but go down. The top wealth in the United States continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger while everyone else gets to contribute to that wealth of the top 3%. So when you hear that the stock market goes up, consider for yourself, what does that do for you? If you're anywhere in the great majority of the country, it does very little for you. When you hear that average wealth in the United States has gone up, remember that that is so skewed by the people at the very top. Consider, think about what has your wealth, how has your wealth grown? If you're very fortunate, your wages has gone, have gone up. If you're one of the very fortunate, what has your wealth done? the amount of money that you actually keep after you pay all your bills. And for corporations, consider several years back when Donald Trump first came in office, there was a huge corporate tax cut. Well, congratulations. Consider what that did for Jeff Bezos. At that point, I was working for Amazon in their returns, in their team and mech department, returns for the larger and heavier items. If Amazon had done nothing new but just say thank you very much for that tax cut, they could have torn down all of their returns and just whatever turns they received, throw them all in the garbage. And besides that, they could have given all of their workers, all of their hourly workers, a 50% pay increase. And then 
they could have paid for all of their workers' medical insurance. All of their hourly workers' medical insurance. And Jeff Bezos still could have taken home three billion dollars for himself and his new young wife to play duck duck goose to have a nice carpeting on their house but then to play duck duck goose we hear it's it's a wonderful thing figures don't lie but liars figure it's a wonderful thing when we hear about the growth of corporations but we have to ask ourselves what kind of growth is that? Is that growth that is actually benefiting the country? If that corporation is growing simply by hunting down and gobbling up smaller companies rather than coming out, say, with a new product or a new idea that actually benefits people's lives that people can buy and the company can sell, which increases payroll, and increases benefit so that now that there's an increased payroll, people have more money to buy that product. But instead what we have is companies looking around to gobble up and make their company fatter and fatter without producing anything new. The only thing new they're producing is the thing that the old company was producing. There is no new payroll. There is no new wealth created for the country. But that company, that corporation, just got bigger. Well, congratulations. Figures don't lie, but liars figure. We are looking for a cycle of economic virtue where growth in a company means growth in payroll and growth in the pay that people actually take home. When there's growth in payroll, then those people are able to buy more. When people buy more, companies can produce more. The companies that provide the raw materials can increase production which creates more wealth for the people who work there, which means they can buy more, which means more is produced. It's a cycle of virtue rather than a cycle of accumulated wealth that does not benefit anyone except the people at the very, very top, increasing their wealth. And how many shoes can they wear? How many meals can they eat in the end if their wealth is not producing then yes that wealth absolutely needs to be taxed we need to remember that there was a time that the top rack tax rate was over 90 percent why was that was the message there hey, make $4 trillion in a year and we'll tax almost all of it at 98%. No, the message was, hey, if you're gonna make, if you're gonna earn over a half a million dollars a year or over a million dollars a year, it's not worth it. Why should you? It's better for your corporation to use that money to increase wages, to maybe make a new product, to increase the public wheel on a wide basis. We need to remember that though figures don't lie, liars figure. And the Republican machine is telling people that this increased wealth is just tremendous, but it doesn't benefit the great majority of Americans. It doesn't benefit the huge majority of Republicans. 
it benefits a very, very few. And this idea that people will cling, cling, and fight to the death for the hope that someday they might be among the rich who can soak it off of everyone else and have power and money. They will fight for that idea rather than accepting the reality of their current poverty, rather than accepting the reality that the game is rigged for the people at the very top, the people at the very top who get generous socialism, and everyone else who gets draconian and stifling capitalism. The figures don't lie, but the liars will always